Hi, my name is Pam Longobardi, and um, I'm here at my studio in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and I'm coming today to talk about uh, the pieces that are in the exhibition. The work chosen are pieces that were made from uh, a particular form of plastic uh, that was the life vests that came from the refugees who traveled across the Aegean Sea to land on the island of Lesbos, Greece. Um, this happened over a couple of years period. Uh, the time that I'd gotten there was about um, the summer of 2015. And it was an invitation to speak at this international small island nations conference. And I was speaking about work we had done on other islands in Greece, which were um, uh, Kefalonia, and to show a film that we made about our work on that island. So the the uh, the conference actually had to be postponed for several years because of the crisis uh, of the refugees in Lesbos, and it was a disaster, um, according to the people that I talked to who lived through it. Uh, just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people were were landing on the shores without uh, you know a, a thing to their name in in rafts that were um, practically you know sinking from overweightedness they had too many people on them uh, there were people that were sent by the um, human traffickers in life vests that were completely inadequate some of them were regulation boating life vests but other ones were uh, pool floaties you know children's um, inflatable water wings and fake inner tubes and you know all kinds of things that you know are barely sufficient to keep someone afloat in a swimming pool and and so um, when I finally did make it to that island at that point in time there had already been over 500,000 half a million refugees that had landed on the shores of this single island and this was just one part of the refugee wave that had been occurring uh, we in the United States through the news had been um, sort of trained to refer to this as a Syrian refugee crisis, but it was so much more than Syria. It included people from Eritrea, Somalia, other countries in Africa. It included Afghanis, it included Iranians, it included, of course, Syrians as well, but you know, almost every country in the Middle East as well were there. So this, this um, crisis was occurring and it was um, impacting the island of Lesbos in a huge way. Um, I was able to get away from the conference and actually go into the camps. I met people, um, was able to interact with some of the unaccompanied minors in a boys camp and decided that I needed to go see this Cemetery of Life Fest, which is where all the material for the pieces that are in the show was obtained. So in terms of the uh, material, this was the discarded life vests from all of the refugees at that point, which had numbered over half a million. And it was an astonishing sight. There were mountains and valleys and just an entire landscape of this material uh, that had been moved into a mountain um, town's dump, actually. And so we were up there and we were just gathering the materials, cutting them open um, and taking the, the surface off. And I had returned in December um, in order to work with a particular camp, PICPA, which was a, a, an open camp. And they already had a project going with Life Fest there. So I thought, well, really what I need to make is a, a flag, a flag for this new nation of refugees. Um, who were from many different countries, but now had no country to call their own. And this was going to be a kind of portable monument. Um, so with their help, I started sewing the flag in camps. And it was a it was kind of an amazing activity. We brought sewing machines. Um, one of the persons who helped the most was an Afghani tailor who had nothing to do in this camp. And he was thrilled to see his, you know, his tool of trade. Uh, we left the sewing machines there with them um, when we left. Uh, and then I made a second flag. So the first one was the day flag. Um, and the, the one that's in the show is the night flag. And we um, 
stumbled upon people who were rescuers, who were Greek citizens. This was in the winter and she was out training to rescue people uh, because they come all day, all year, day and night. And so uh, this flag is kind of honoring the travelers that came at night. Uh, the other piece is uh, signal flags for climate change. And they were um, based on an idea that we're talking about climate change. Um, this whole refugee crisis began because of climate change. And we uh, are, are not communicating somehow the gravity of this situation. Um, most people um, are, are paying attention, but some still don't believe that. And I think we, we, we absolutely have to wake up to this fact, which is changing the human and animal populations on this planet in drastic ways. And so I, I created a performance cycle that I did um, in Wales, in, in Greece, and in other locations that um, involved semaphore, which is spelling um, words out uh, that are meant to be seen from, for distance communication. And it's a, it's a, um, a language that the uh, Navy developed. And so I was spelling um, prepare for climate change as a, a metaphor for the fact that no one could actually read this. Um, I was doing it from the position of facing out to sea as a scout and uh, doing it behind my back. So it was in some ways backwards and you know, relaying a message that this, this climate change, this wave of, of change is coming. Um, the most beautiful part about the project though really was the collaboration. And this involved a collaboration right here in my studio. I have a long-term um, partner and assistant named Susan Nippenberg who uh, has gone with me on most of my big trips. And she was there right by my side in all of this. She helps me in the field. She helps me in the studio and she's an invaluable part of this project. Um, and so we went together and uh, um, met people there who were volunteering in the camps and we were talking to Greeks and other nationalities uh, that had come to volunteer and just to be able to try to help someone in their most desperate moment um, which was I think a privilege to actually see this um, a people in this state of vulnerability and to be able to offer them something which was a moment's uh, relief perhaps from the the anxiety of their life at that point but it was just a you know a really um moving moment and um something i'll never forget <laughs>